All right, what's up everyone? I'm uh, I'm really excited about today's video. This was a kayak fishing, camping, exploration trip that me and a buddy of mine named Bart and a friend of his took um, in January a couple years ago. Uh, been I've had this footage for a while, just that wasn't able to uh, to share it on um, just because of the bandwidth issues I have where I live. But I was able to uh, recently upgrade my internet and uh, I'm able to do long long duration videos now. So uh, this was 310 miles. It took us 26 days to paddle the entire St. Johns River. Uh, so I'm just gonna we're gonna jump in and uh, I'm just gonna I'm excited about the video because like I said this was this was a cool adventure um, yeah let's get it going we launched um, January 4th right after that uh, right actually during the freeze so uh, the weather's been great since then in comparison for sure uh, we started all the way down in Blue Cypress Lake uh, Indian River County and uh, we've been working our way north uh, since then we are. Uh, like I said, we're in the final 40 miles now, so uh, we're, we're kind of feeling that victory lap feeling, but we know we still have some serious navigation to do. Uh, a little different than trying to find our way through Puzzle Lake or, uh, or or some of the other Mother's Arms, stuff like that, down by Harney and, and you know, Highway 50 down by Orlando. But uh, now we know we're kind of in, you know, big swift water. Uh, yesterday we were coming up by Fleming Island. We were planning on shooting over and making it to 295 bridge yesterday. And uh, as you guys probably well know, that wind switched about 11 o'clock and we were still <clears throat> we were still on the West Bank. So we ended up uh, pulling up um, at, at a private marina and, and, and talking to those guys and letting us pull out there because this, this river went from a sheet of glass like it is right now to about two and a half foot in about 15 minutes. So me and uh, Bart and Ben, we, we drove down the day before. Uh, it was uh, a cold front that was moving through Florida. I think it was like the fourth worst uh, in their history. Um, so rather than start off, we had planned on starting like the January 2nd. We waited till the 4th because we want to give the cold front a couple days to push through, which gave us a chance to get out and visit some of the local uh, marinas and boat docks and things like that and try to set up some resupply points. Um, the first 10 days are all self-support. Uh, and we can only carry so much in kayaks. So we, we just we reached out to some local businesses and they were cool with us dropping some stuff off as long as we came back by and picked it up, which we were gonna have to do. So we, we uh, waited the front out a little bit and then set out on January 4th um, at Blue Cypress Marina uh, in South Florida. St. John's flows north. Eventually it makes its way out into the Atlantic by Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, the next several days, 10 days or whatnot, the next 100 miles, we basically uh, start off in the canals uh, Bart had set this up to start in January because he guides outside, outside of St. Augustine and a hurricane had dumped a lot of water in their system and you need some water in the beginning on um, the canals just they, they, they dry up and it becomes just basically airboat uh, territory so I heard some stories about local kayakers who trying to do this and were uh, they got turned around and had to be rescued and just couldn't do it so we had lots of water which was really great uh, unfortunately we also had some cold temperatures in the beginning um, so we did the best we could it was not you know like 30 whatever at night uh it's just a little bit uncomfortable the days got up to like 45 and then later in the, in the you know, like midway mid january whatever one you know one you know, back up to like in the 70s whatever so we had you know we timed it pretty well um but yeah uh, the beginning of the trip you're pretty much just uh on your own first 10 days or in the swamp there's not a lot around you're not really getting off the, the water once you get on He's not moving though, huh? huh? So he's not moving though, huh? Limited spots for camping. Um, there's some structures that are built in the in the St. John's River system and you pretty much have to go and get to them. So we found a uh, place to camp on a levee the first night, maybe the second night, uh, and then we basically just went, you know, basically shelter hopping, just trying to make it to the shelters. Uh, day two of the St. John's River story. Uh, great day yesterday, unbelievable uh, sights. Um, really had a few areas where we had to trudge through uh, some good wind, but it, it, it uh, you know, 15 mile an hour, not, nothing, nothing horrible, but we did have a uh, cr crossing, crossing uh, Blue Cypress Lake was 
choppy. Got uh, Ben didn't have his splash pants, so uh, Ben Ben ended up unfortunately starting his day off uh, with with wet legs. But it, you know, it didn't really. The temperature didn't drop last night into the 30s until after it got dark. By then, we were in in camp, uh, had already cooked dinner, and we're, and we're uh, getting in our tents. So we were, we, we you know, great day yesterday. Uh, we are camped right now just outside the Stick Marsh. Uh, we made it um, just over 14 miles in and uh, found a nice dry spot. So we, we opted to uh, stop while we still had some daylight and get set up. We are trying to make it to uh, roughly about 15 miles up from right here, uh, just north of Camp Holly. So uh, let's, let's see what we can do. There you go. Today actually, to me, felt like it rolled so much. <laughs> yeah, it was a little better. Too. I think it's going to hit current today. It's yeah. Current. yeah. <laughs> it literally was rolling. <laughs> Gonna catch any fish. Yeah. Yeah. But we should still go out before it gets dark because we are on a fishing trip. So the first big crossing we had was actually uh, Lake Washington after our first supply stop and it was pretty pretty brutal crossing the lake and the headwinds and the two to three foot waves. Uh, but we made it through. It was important at that point in time to kind of stay on track because we were, we were bouncing from shelter to shelter. Not a lot of options in the St. Johns River for uh, camping on, on ground. Uh, wasn't a lot of dry land. Like I said, the hurricane had come through earlier and it flooded the entire system. So for us, we had to take advantage of the shelters, which meant not a lot of fishing and just covering ground. One night we found uh, a pretty cool shelter. We had to bushwhack our way into it. You could tell the alligators had spent more time on it than people. Uh, and that night we saw a, uh, I think it was like a satellite launch or something. It was kind of cool. I didn't really know what it was. Bart, you know, they live in Florida. They're from the, the area and they once he saw what was going on, he kind of recognized him, but he, he had never seen oh. it from the swamp uh, at night. It was really cool. I had a helicopter pass over, that was pretty cool. <laughs> That's too cool. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs>
sharp in that thing. Definitely, we're, uh, we were expecting to make this probably in like 18 days, um, but because of the headwinds we faced in the beginning and uh, Bart blew out a propeller on his flex drive, um, maybe the fifth Shit day or fourth day, but we ended up having to uh, stop one night short uh, and end up camping um, basically at, I think it was called Jolly Gator. I might be wrong with the name, um, but we had, we, they had some floating little docks uh, we camped out on top of those because we weren't, they weren't allowed, we weren't allowed, they didn't want us camping on their property, which makes sense. I mean, if, if we did it, then, you know, they would you'd just get hammered with people, you know, wanting to stay the night on their property. So, uh, but Bart's wife met us. She brought some extra supplies and uh, an extra prop for him to fix his kayak. What's up? It's uh, day six. I know it's day six because I ate my last bagel. Uh, we're going to start here at the Highway 95 bridge. We stayed here last night. We got in kind of late. Um, Bart's wife Holly, she brought us some uh, some supplies and some uh, gave us a chance to relax and sleep. But we didn't really have another place to step, so we stayed right here at this little camp. Not much else here. Um, we asked the owners of the uh, the uh, restaurant over here if we could camp out over there in their in their backyard, but they said no. So not a big deal. We decided just to stay here by the park. It gave us uh, a chance to use the facilities, which has been kind of nice, um, and clean up and get ready for the next four to five days. Um, got a six mile, maybe eight mile, maybe ten mile. Kind of want to wait though. There's a lot of weather moving in, so we're just going to have to wait and see how it goes. Kind of lower by the highway. Hope you guys can hear what I'm saying. But, uh, been an awesome trip so far. And, yeah, dude, I'm ready to get going. Got a big day ahead of us. Um, starting out mile 60, probably going to finish up to mile 70, and camp out in another structure. Uh, the river's kind of high, so Finding a place to camp is kind of important. Um, there's not a lot of sandbars and things, which we were kind of hoping for. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, look forward to check back in with you guys a little bit later. Um, next couple days, we uh, same thing, just setting out, just trying to cover ground. Uh, we realized early on that we were behind schedule, and if we wanted to make this uh, less than a month, we were gonna have to press pretty hard. So we didn't get to fish a lot. Uh, we were just covering water, saw some cool things, alligators, um, lots of like eagles, juvenile eagles, bald eagles, things like that, uh, cattle crossing the streams, the river, cattle in the on the banks. Um, it's a beautiful area. I mean, it's just swampy, and I can't imagine what it'd be like. Um, and you'll see when as it gets closer and the weather gets better, like when it's uh, it's just beautiful. It's just a you know super pristine area and lots of alligators. And uh, unfortunately, we just didn't get to take advantage of the fishing, but I heard it's great fishing. So. We just kept pressing on the next couple of days. Uh, we're just moving, trying to cover as much water as we can. We're, you know, said we only we went 310 miles. We actually went further because we did a lot of zigzagging and stopping, um, and just trying to, you know, check maps and whatnot. Um, but uh, it was fun. It was a crazy fun adventure.
So we continued on our way, just doing some stealth camping and camping in along the St. John's where we could. Uh, temperatures were, you know, they were getting down in the 40s at night. We're, you know, showering in the river, uh, bathing in the river, trying to keep clean, uh, making ground. We fished night, kept some catfish, uh, kept some crappie. Um, we got into a little bit of a shad run at some point in time, caught some shad. That was kind of fun. Uh, some, some hybrid. Raw meat on it, so we got it. Mm -hmm. I didn't make much, just enough to... <laughs> that was a push, huh? That was a push. That was a push. That was a good one. Uh, one of the things that Bart had done before the trip is he had reached out to several of the uh, local businesses and Air Airbnbs and things like that. And we had a houseboat for one night. And I think we stayed two or three nights there just trying to catch up and rest and resupply and um, fish off the dock a little bit, caught some crappie and kept some fish. And it was just fantastic. The fishery is just, you know, amazing. The best fishing we got was actually in Lake George. Uh, this is the first time we were actually able to settle down. And a lot of that was because Bart had a hunting cabin in the area. So we we're using his hunting cabin uh, to kind of stage every night. And we were basically just, you know, dropping. And what we thought when we got to Lake George, this was like the first big lake. We had crossed some other lakes uh, early on in the trip and they weren't nearly as big as we were gonna have to, we were gonna get at Lake George. And we knew we were gonna have to be a little bit cautious. Uh, and we kind of hoped to, to break that up into three days depending on the weather. Um, but we were fortunate, it was glass. The first day we got in and we, we set up and just fished around these little um, wooden structures one night and caught a bunch of hybrids. We had a great, great day um, just catching fish right there. It was the first day we actually got to do some like real meaningful fishing. Thank you. 
There we go. I feel like I paddled 160 <laughs> miles for this fish. Hold up for me, I'm on video. <laughs> nice fish. 160 miles for that guy right there. Stoked, man. Man, it's been a great day. It's been a, it's been a wonderful day. Today has probably been the best day we've had so far. Great fishing here on Lake George. Water super calm. Uh, we were, weren't really expecting that. We were hopeful, but I mean, it's glass. It is glass out there. It's nice. Um, we came in early this morning, paddled about six miles, got here, and we fished for about uh, through lunch for a couple hours. But we have a 10 mile paddle to get to our lunch. We got to break this lake up in a couple legs because it's so long. We were kind of worried that the uh, the winds would kind of kind of beat us up, but they haven't. Fishing was good. It's been an awesome day. Pumped to be out here. Day, who knows? Just having a good time. And the next morning we got up and we headed out, uh, had some more camping along the riverbank. Uh, as you get in closer to civilization, it becomes less uh, swamp and more, you know, like what you would consider a river. So we had some high banks, didn't really find, have a hard time finding places to set up tents and camp. Uh, did some catfishing, crappie fishing, ate some fish. We had just a grand time. It was pretty fantastic. And you can zoom out or whatever because I don't want to be like full head in the picture. Oh. Wow, I gotta take my glasses off. Yeah, you like, can't see it with the You don't want to just have it on your nostrils while you're doing this? Yeah, could you just focus as tight as possible? And I do that manually out here, right? Yeah, yeah. or you can just step back. But it'd be better to get close because I need the sound. All right, so we're uh, this is day 15. We're going to make our way up to Blue Cypress Lake. Uh, we had a tip that the uh, the manatees were in, so we're kind of excited to get up there and see what, what that's about. I saw one yesterday. It was the first one I've seen in the law, but... Uh, Blue Springs is supposed to be like the special place where the water temperature stays about 72 and the manatees come in uh, in kind of winter right there when the, when the waters get a little bit cold. So we're excited about that. We're going to get out and uh, get some fishing in and make our way up the river on day 15. All right, guys. See you next time. And my pants are still hanging up there. <laughs> I'll grab them and bring them to you. <laughs>
Uh, and then we just, we, you know, we, ba we basically bounced around the last part of the probably 10 days of the trip, um, camping and sheltering. Once you get close to St. Augustine, uh, that's where Bart was from, that's where he lived. So we were able to take advantage of his house and we basically did the uh, truck shuttle, just moved from launch to launch. One day the winds got you know, kicked up pretty bad again and we had to take out a little bit early uh, at a private um, boat marina, boat dock. And they were super fortunate that we had that there. They, were, they allowed us to take out and then come back in as long as we didn't share where that was at because they didn't want uh, people just stopping in. So we, we can't share it, but it was uh, some super friendly people there allowed us to, um, in some bad situations, to take advantage of uh, a, a place to get off, get off the water. Uh, Bart ended up actually hurting his back or shoulder or something at some point in time um, and had to rest a couple days. So I was able to st spend some time fishing locally uh, in the area and caught some bass. It was a fantastic day uh, just fishing around. We found some redfish on the trip, found some um, some bass, we found some crappie, uh, saw some tilapia, uh, ate some fish, some catfish, uh, and just did a, you know, a, lot of, a lot of camping and cooking and fishing and just having a fantastic time. process right now of uh, we're, we're kind of down in the last 40 miles of the, of the 310 miles of the St. John's River. We're uh, 
if you if, if anybody's listening they're going over the Buckman Bridge if you look to the south we're kind of blank at the east shore working our way towards the Buckman today so we're gonna get past it so. <laughs> there we go there we go no we're, we're shooting for good beast today uh, if we can make it a good beast we might make a little bit more run up but we know that uh, we got to hit we got to hit that main street bridge and that whole section there. We definitely got to catch that with the tide in our favor. Yeah, well we were, we started off the first 150 miles. We were running um, basically just like our first nine days were self-sufficient, everything with us. Um, by the time we made it up to Ocala, getting around the 200 mile mark, we, um, I have a hunting cabin out there, a family hunting cabin. So we were kind of using that as our base. We dropped a lot of weight, and uh, now that we're up in Jacksonville, um, it's just the, the camping options get to like pretty much none unless we wanted to hang our hammocks on some uh, Irma Irma decorated. Uh, uh, the, the, you know, we could probably get away with that for a night if we did that at night. But we're, I'm so close to my house uh, down in St. Augustine that we've just been doing some hopscotch with vehicles, uh, which takes up a little bit of time, but it you know it gives us a hot shower in the evening and after. After six, you know, six hours of running, uh, which is all we can run right now with the tides, uh, it, that that's kind of nice to do after the way the trip started, freezing cold temperatures and, and camping. <laughs> yeah, they're they're asking us if we're going to Hooters when we get off the water and why that's our target. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah man we got that catfish we actually caught some speck that day uh, throwing for bass and we ate speck that night for dinner and then uh, we were using the kind of the remains off of it and caught a couple catfish so uh, yeah but but yo yo we didn't eat the 10 pounder but we ate some of the smaller ones we let we let we let that ten pounder go. Uh, I, I I I like those ones that are about as long as your hand, or maybe a little longer for for eating personally. The um, but hey, on a we are in. I would say um, depending on if there's any bull reds when we start to mess around going through downtown right there, that might add a day to our trip. But we're we're, we're within like three or four days of wrapping this thing up. But as we got closer to Jacksonville, we we noticed that the uh, and we knew ahead of time we were gonna have to start timing the tides. Uh, one day we did like 30 miles in one day because of the, the tides kind of, we got some flow, had a little bit of a wind behind us. Uh, we were able to make up some ground, but uh, as you get closer to Jacksonville, you, you have to start dealing with the tides. Um, you have four to six foot tidal swings, which puts, you know, some some water moving in and water moving out. And if you don't time it right, you're you're basically not going to get anywhere. It could actually be a little bit of a dangerous situation. Um, but Barb being from the area and being a guide, he was pretty familiar with what we are going to do. So we just relied on him to kind of tell us where uh, we're going to start, where we're going to go. And we just used his house um, every night to, to hang out. And then we just got up each morning, drove the truck to where we're going to start, and then shuttled a vehicle to where we're going to take out at. And we just did that for the last 10 days um, and just took advantage of the tides, made covered some water. I think we finished the last three or four days. Uh, we did, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 miles in the last three days or whatever. So it was pretty cool to be able to take advantage of those tides. Um, the last day, got up early it was cloudy made our way through traffic uh it's the first time we'd had to deal with like super like congestion or whatever so it was kind of like a just kind of a reminder that we were back in civilization after being away from it for the first part of the trip it was kind of kind of surreal i guess you would say Excited. We got we still have an incoming current, so we're kind of uh, taking it easy at the dock today, uh, waiting. Uh, we do have some winds picking up, so we're 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 going to get started even with the incoming current, uh, just to kind of poke around, get down by Mill Cove, and uh, and then kind of swing through Mill Cove. Um, very excited. Today's our, our day. We uh, we're not planning a whole lot of fishing today. We got a little bit, a few trout spots. We're going to swing in and just make a couple casts on our way through. But other than that, we are on the move. Uh, the weather's cooperated with us uh, unbelievably towards the end of this trip, without a doubt. We've, uh, ever since Lake George, we've just really been very, very fortunate um, with slicked off conditions. Today we have some, a little bit of wind, but not bad at all. And uh, so, so we're, 
It is a northwest wind, and uh, once we get up, we're going to have to sh cross the shipping channel at some point. Um, we were basically just waiting for the tides, uh, and Bart does a pretty good job of explaining Splash that. But, uh, it's kind of cool to be paddling through, I mean, you know, these big cities and seeing the major metropolitan areas, and then when you get closer to uh, the naval base, you're, you get to see some of the, the, uh, the naval boats and destroyers and cruisers and whatever else is there and helicopters flying over, but you also have uh, transport ships and cargo container ships, like you're in a kayak out there, it's pretty uh, it's pretty cool, at the same time it's a little bit uh, intimidating because um, you realize that you better get out of their way because they're, uh, they can't really stop, so um, we, were he we were headed down, um, you can see the tides moving out pretty fast, it was pretty cool. But uh, found our way down. The uh, the takeout for this trip is on the left side of. I can't remember the name of the. Uh, it's like Hobart Park or something. Um, but it's a sandy little beachy area there, and there were some people waiting for us. And it was kind of cool. Got to you know watch Ben and Bart paddle in first, and I kind of came in after. And uh, after 26 days, it was super exciting to be on the uh, on ground, finish this trip up, uh, and just uh, what a just was a crazy good adventure. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, I hope it put. Alright, so yeah, after 26 days, 310 miles, it was good to be uh, done with that adventure. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any questions, leave them below. Thanks for watching.